All right, Daniel here, I'm back. And here in this video, we're gonna talk about abstract data types in Scala. This goes hand in hand with the previous video with inheritance. All right, so in my ID, I'm actually going to create an entirely new Scala application just for this video because we're going to make uh, heavy modifications. So I'm actually going to rename this inheritance and traits thing to be only inheritance. So I used Control Alt R in um, in my IDE to rename the symbol, and if I hit Enter, the IDE will take care to rename the file as well. And in the Part 2 OP package, I'm going to create an entirely new Scala application called uh, Abstract Data Types, and um, I'm going to make this an object, of course, and extends app. So we have a fresh application just for this video. Cool. So there are situations where you need to leave some fields or methods blank or unimplemented. These are called abstract members. Classes which contain unimplemented or abstract fields or methods are called abstract classes and they are defined by the keyword abstract. So abstract class and let's uh, define an abstract class animal with uh, two fields. Uh, val creature type which is a string and notice I'm not defining it I'm not supplying a value here on the right hand side that means this value is abstract and uh, let's supply a method eat which returns unit and it is also unimplemented so this method is also abstract cool so this is an example of an abstract class where you do not supply values for this value and for this method specifically because you want the uh, subclasses to do that for you so this is an example of an abstract class now one thing to note that abstract classes cannot be instantiated it should make sense because an instance of a class has to have all these methods implemented otherwise how would the runtime know what to execute when you call for example the method eat so for example if i declare an animal to be a new animal then the compiler will complain saying class animal is extract cannot be instantiated and object creation impossible because these two guys are not implemented so let's delete that basically abstract classes and abstract data types are made to be extended later so let's extend it with a class dog Now, at this point, the compiler complains and saying class dog must either be declared abstract or implement abstract members eat and creature type. So the correct way to define dog is to simply provide an implementation on the abstract fields. So say override val creature type string equals, let's say, canine and override def eat unit and just as prints crunch crunch. Now these implementations qualify as overriding, but the override keyword is not really mandatory for abstract members. So if I delete it, the compiler will still figure out that there is uh, that this method actually overrides an abstract member from the superclass. So there's no prior implementation to replace, so the compiler is happy. All right, you've learned about abstract classes. Let's talk about traits which are the ultimate abstract data types in Scala. Traits are created by the uh, using the keyword trait and then the name of the trait, much like the name of an abstract class. Let's call this carnivore. And this trait describes things which can eat animals. So let's supply a method called eat with a parameter animal of type animal. And let's just assume this guy returns unit. Uh, we don't really care about the return type. So notice that this method is also abstract and traits by default, like abstract classes, have abstract fields and methods. But what's special about traits is that unlike abstract classes, they can be inherited along classes. Let me show you what I mean. So if I define a class called crocodile, which extends animal, I can also inject a trait here with carnivore. And this basically means that this class crocodile inherits members from both animal and carnivore. So let's give some implementation here in the class crocodile. Let's uh, supply a val creature type, which is a string. And let's say the creature type is uh, croc, for example. 
Now let's uh, define the two abstract methods, eat, which returns unit. And let's say this is uh, nom 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 for brevity, and the def eat method from the carnivore treat. This also returns unit, and let's just uh, do an s interpolated string with saying I'm a croc. I'm a croc and I'm eating and I'm injecting here let's say animal dot creature type right so if I'm eating a dog uh, the crocodile will say I'm a croc and I'm eating a dog all right so just to prove an example um, if I declare a dog which is a new dog and a crocodile new crocodile and croc eat dog then this guy will print I'm a croc and I'm eating animal dot creature type which in this case is canine so um, actually let's print this out of course and here as well all right so uh, croc eat dog will print, I'm a croc and I'm eating a canine. So if I right click and run here, let's see what this prints out. It says, I'm a croc and I'm eating canine, right? So you've seen here how we extend a class with a trait. We can actually mix in multiple traits here. So we, if you have yet another trait uh, saying, let's say, cold-blooded, then you can actually mix it here with cold-blooded. Okay, you can mix in as many traits as you want. Okay, now I want to talk about the difference between traits versus abstract classes. Because abstract classes can have abstract and non abstract types. So let's just say, uh, for example, this guy is wild. Okay, now of course, this needs the override modifier now that creature type is not abstract. So abstract classes can have both abstract and non-abstract members, but so can traits. So if I define um, a val, let's say preferred meal, which is a string, and uh, let's just say the value here is uh, meat, fresh meat. Right? This is a non-abstract member. So both abstract classes and traits have both abstract and non-abstract members. So this begs the question, how are traits actually different from abstract classes? Well, for one, traits cannot have constructor parameters. So traits do not have constructor parameters. This is a hard practical difference. If I go to the trait carnivore and try to pass in um, name, this will not compile because uh, the compiler is confused. It doesn't even expect um, an identifier here for the trait, right? So traits do not have constructor parameters. Second, you can only extend one class, but you can mix in multiple traits, right? So two, multiple traits may be inherited by the same class. At the beginning I said Scala has single class inheritance, but I didn't say that it has multiple trait inheritance. So this is how you in implement multiple inheritance in Scala. All right. And the third thing, and this is a little more subtle, and this is a more subtle mat matter of choice, actually. So we choose a trait versus an abstract class if it describes a type of behavior. So traits are behavior. Notice that I've named the straight carnivore because it describes the type of things that uh, eat animals. But an abstract class is a type of thing. Right? So animals describe animals, but traits describe what they do. Cool. So now that you know how Scala does inheritance, let's talk a little bit about Scala's giant type hierarchy. This starts with the type any, which is basically the mother of all types. Now, 
derived from any, we have any ref, which is mapped to Java's object type. All classes you will use will derive from any ref unless you explicitly say they extend some other class. So all the classes that we use, like string, list, set, and all user-derived classes, will extend any ref even though you don't explicitly say so. If you define a plain class like person, it implicitly extends any ref. Now derived from all of these is the scala.null type, which is very special. Its only instance is the null reference, which basically means no reference. This um, type hierarchy works this way, so null extends basically everything, in the sense that you can replace anything, for example, a person, with null, with no reference. All right, on the left-hand side, we have any vowels, which contain all the primitive values of Scala, like int or boolean or float, and some other classes that extend any val. It's very rarely used in practice, and you very rarely need to extend any val, maybe for some memory optimizations, but uh, any val normally contains just the mm, uh, primitive types in Scala. And derived from all of them is Scala nothing, in the sense that, again, nothing can replace everything. Uh, this will make sense um, a little bit later when we talk about throwing exceptions and expressions returning nothing, but nothing, just so you know, in Scala is a subtype of every single thing in Scala. Nothing means no instance of anything at all, not even null, not even unit, not even anything. It's the type of nothingness, if you will. There are expressions returning nothing, and we'll talk about them later in this section. For now, let's take a small break and get back in the next video where we're going to practice what we've learned. I'm waiting for you.